Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Retirement Train Straight Talk, where I give you the simple truth every damn day and every damn video, y'all. This particular video is going to focus on eight important factors that you need to consider about seven years prior to retirement. And there could be more or could be less, but I picked eight important ones that I thought uh, was pertinent for y'all during this time frame because seven years gives you plenty of time to think about things uh reevaluate what you're going to do so as they say onward right again eight important steps seven years prior uh to retirement now before i get into the important steps here i just want to say this is coming from a guy who's got um a net worth of seven figures um and uh several thousand dollars a month coming in from income because I designed it that way. I planned it over a long, long time. So uh, some of it may have been luck. I don't know. But a lot of it was planning. Okay. With that said, um, I've been seeing your comments down below. And I know everyone's coming to these particular channels for information. And my job, I think, is to give you some information. You can pick and choose from the different channels what you want and what you think to plan for retirement comfortably, right? And hopefully not uh, run out of the money. And so I thank you for at least stopping at my channel and listen to what I have to say or babble along with, all right? Because um, I enjoy doing it when I can do it. And these are from my perspective. So again, onward, as they say. All right, so why do people need to hear the basics? over and over again in my opinion it's because retirement planning is equally mental and behavioral shift as it is the financial shift right um the first big picture of planning when i say it, that should be seven years out for those who are just starting to think about retirement right now you might think about it much prior but seven years now is getting to the time where you need to say i'm thinking about retirement and I'm not advocating that this is where you start um, investing. Oh, no, 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 no. You should have been saving from your employer-sponsored 401k or 403b from day one from work because it takes time. I don't care what anybody tells you. It takes time. And what we're talking about here is your last seven years. Uh, and Because you're going to be saying bye-bye to the workforce and hello, retirement. Awesome, right? So these things I, I thought of and pursued. Some examples are really, and they're not in any order, um, but they're close by, right? And number one, in my view, is make sure you're diversified and you're investing for growth. Important. Um, I made this number one because at seven years out, uh, you have enough time to correct course, if need be, on the way you do your risk assessment, right? This is also where I believe folks may seek out a, uh, you know, some advice from a fee-only financial planner um, who is a fiduciary and who can probably steer you and help you uh, look at your risk assessment at this time. This is what I did. Uh, number two, you, know, you might want to think about estimating what your likely income will be or need to be at whatever age you decide to retire at, right? Remember now, only y'all can figure this out. But, you know, statistics tell us that most are fine with 75 to 80% of their last working year's income. Now, this may not be for everyone. You know, for instance, if you want to travel uh, uh, the first five years, one through five years of retirement, then, well, Maybe think about 90%. That's, that's what I did of your last year's work income, right? And then maybe you can reduce that lower after that fifth year, after re all the traveling is pretty much done. And let's say you can stay on 70, 75% of your income. Number three, estimate your retirement expenses, right? Now, to me, two and three should be in unison. And I know it seems too early, but you really need to start feeling this out early because. Believe me when I say this, um, because you, you know that your expenses in retirement are not going to be the same as your expenses while you're working. 
because you know while you're working you got college you got car loans you got all this stuff that's happening when you retire for example most folks will have their house paid off and you know that that relieves a lot of stress uh going into retirement um so if your retirement income will be let's say fifty thousand you'd be fine if everything else is paid for, right? I mean, that, that, that should still give you one large vacation a year if you want and, and, you know, think about those things. The other thing is a retirement date in mind. Uh, and this dives into the weeds of retirement planning, right? Because baby boomers have done a terrible job of this. And we, we had, a, had a hard time getting our act together. And I was one of them. I had that one-year syndrome going on. One more year, right? One more year. Because we keep thinking that, you know, you're never going to stop and you need more money. And, you know, you're making the most money in your career. The other one is you should think about, you know, having that discussion with your wife about all these things. Number five is take full advantage of your retirement accounts, especially the catch-up contributions. This is a crucial point now. Seven years out is where I really started maxing things out for myself. I was putting 30 to 35 percent of my income in different buckets. Now I'm talking Roth, annuities, 401ks, and of course cash buckets, right? And lastly, I had some stock investments that I, you know, it takes money to make money when you're compounding. Um, as you near retirement, consider account consolidations, right? Um, including, you know, combining IRAs that you had from different jobs and, you know, put them all in one institution this may simplify your investment management skills right keep it all in one place if you're going to get an advisor let them all carry it if not put it into a swab fidelity you know uh, morgan stanley those sorts of things number six do a plan um if you're going to move make sure you have a plan and maybe you've had you know several nice vacations in places that you enjoyed and you, you know maybe it's in a different state and, and again, you've really, really liked it there. You've done your homework on things like, you know, all these things, especially, but don't forget about the taxes, the politics, you know, the HOAs, uh, the weather in, in both summer and winter. So it's good to go both times. All these things are important. And as, as most of you know, we moved from Virginia Beach out to Texas here. And uh, I did the homework on it. We both did our research, but I didn't. Uh, count in here how hot it would be with no rain, right? It's just been hot, y'all. Now, this has been a bad year, I know. It's been a heat wave all around the country, but we haven't had any rain for 40 days, and it's been crazy, y'all. Crazy here. A lot, you know, number seven is downsize your debt. We've talked about this several times, and this is one of those must-do things. Um, get rid of your debt prior to going into retirement, because if not, this will be the kiss of, kiss of death for y'all. Uh, if you're spending all your money paying off this high interest debt while you're in retirement, you know, like credit cards uh, and stuff like that, you won't have income for the rest of your retirement fun stuff, the enjoyment parts. You know, this causes stress and anxiety in retirement. And that just doesn't, y'all just don't need that, right? Just shed it all if possible and get it over with. Number eight is think hard about your future medical costs. Uh, and think about not in today's dollars, but in future dollars, right? And that's probably everything that we talked about. Your salary, your income, all in future dollars, especially if you're not going to get, you know, COLID pensions. You need to make your own. You need to plan for inflation and all that kind of stuff. Because, you know, you can get COLA, ACA, Obamacare, if your income's low enough those sorts of things for healthcare. But boy, as you know, it gets expensive. Those are the eight things I wanted to share with you today. And I hope this helped you. Uh, I hope you wrote them down. If not, you can always go back through the video and, and write them down. But there's plenty more. But I think those eight things are really something you really need to focus on, y'all. Um, because in the end, it's just you in retirement and the job is gone. Be wise about it. I hope this helps you. Y'all take care. God bless. This is the Retirement Train Straight Talk out.